Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Palm Sunday worship, presented from home by members of the ministry team of the Woodbridge Group of Churches in rural North Wiltshire. The service is led by us, Mike and Alison. Uh, Jeanette will read God's word to us. Tony will preach and Heather will lead us in prayer. If you don't have a copy of the order of service, you can access one right now on either of our Facebook pages, Woodbridge Group of Churches and Woodbridge Churches Online. Otherwise, just sit back and join in as best you can. We invite you to worship along with us, to join in the singing and the spoken parts in bold. And if you have something like a palm branch to wave, it will be an added bonus. Otherwise, just wave your hand. So today is Palm Sunday, the day Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, just a week ahead of the events of Good Friday and Easter Day. In these difficult times for our world, our nation, our communities, our families, and ourselves, we pray that he will ride into our midst and come to our aid as we worship him today. So we begin our service and please get ready to wave your palm branches. Shout for joy, you people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you, triumphant and victorious, but humble and riding on a donkey. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we're going to sing uh, unaccompanied, I'm afraid, but you can join in from home. Make way, make way for Christ the King in splendor arise. Fling wide the gates and welcome him into your lives. Make way, make way, make way, make way for the King of Kings. For the King of Kings. Make way, make way, make way, make way and let his kingdom in. He comes the broken hearts to heal, the prisoners to free. The deaf shall hear, the lame shall dance, the blind shall see. Make way, make way for the King of Kings. For the King of Kings. Make way, make way, and let His kingdom in. And those who mourn with heavy hearts who weep and sigh with laughter, joy, and royal crown, he'll beautify. Make way, make way, make way for the King of Kings. For the King of Kings. Make way, make way. Make way. Let his kingdom in. We call you now to worship him as Lord of all. To have no gods before him, their thrones must fall. Make way, make way for the King of Kings. For the King of Kings. Make way, make way, and let His kingdom in. Well sung, everybody. Uh, now we're going to confess our sins to Christ. So just a moment of quiet as we collect our thoughts, think back over our lives and over the past week, and we pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you come to us in peace, but we shut you out. You come to us in humility, but we prefer our proud ways. You come to us in judgment, 
that we cling on to our familiar sins. You come to us in majesty, but we will not have you as our king. Lord, forgive our empty praise, fill our loveless hearts, and help us to serve you all our days. Amen. And may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I apologise that the singing is just me now, um, but uh, our next song is uh, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And remember, that was the word of praise that um, everyone sang as Jesus rode into Jerusalem. They were waving their palm branches. And so we're going to sing Hosanna. It's a word that means praise him. And it's also a word that means save us now. So we sing together. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord my God. Hosanna in the highest. Glory, glory, glory to the King of kings. Glory, glory, glory to the King of kings. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord my God, glory to the King of Kings. Well, I can imagine a beautiful choir there at home, everyone joining in with that, and I hope you were uh, as well. So we're going now to state our faith in God the Father, Jesus Christ, his Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask some questions and the responses will be I believe and trust in him. Do you believe in God the Father who made the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his son, who redeemed mankind? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our, our faith. faith. We, we believe, believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And now Jeanette is going to read to us. Our scripture reading is taken from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 to 16. As Jesus and his followers were coming closer to Jerusalem, they stopped at Bethphage, at the hill called the Mount of Olives. From there, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, go to the town you can see there. When you enter it, you will quickly find a donkey tied there with its coat. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks you why you are taking the donkeys, say that the master needs them and he will send them at once. This was to bring about what the prophet said. Tell the people of Jerusalem, your king is coming to you. He is gentle and riding on a donkey, on the colt of a donkey. The followers went and did what Jesus told them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt to Jesus and laid their coats on them. And Jesus sat on them. Many people spread their coats on the road. Others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The people were walking ahead of Jesus and behind him, shouting, Praise to the Son of David. God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise to God in heaven. 
When Jesus entered Jerusalem, all the city was filled with excitement. The people asked, who is this man? The crowd said, this man is Jesus, the prophet from the town of Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus went into the temple and threw out all the people who were buying and selling there. He turned over the tables of those who were exchanging different kinds of money. And he upset the benches of those who were selling doves. Jesus said to all the people there, it is written in the scriptures, my temple will be called a house of prayer, but you are changing it into a hideout for robbers. The blind and crippled people came to Jesus in the temple and he healed them. The leading priests and the teachers of the law saw that Jesus was doing wonderful things and that the children were praising him in the temple, saying, praise to the son of David. All these things made the priests and teachers of the law very angry. They asked Jesus, do you hear the things those children are saying? Jesus answered, yes. Haven't you read in the scriptures? You have taught children and babies to sing praises. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Before we think about that, let us pray together. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Palm Sunday has traditionally been a day of true collective worship. As we join with those who first sang Hosanna to their King, it seems strange to be isolated and at a distance from each other. However, it was from this day on, Jesus became increasingly isolated. After the adulation, it was only a matter of days before the disciples could not stay awake whilst he prayed in Gethsemane and soon after fled from him at his, at his arrest. The crowds who sang Hosanna turned against him and cried, crucify him. The Jewish leaders and the Roman officials mocked and abused him and hung him on a cross. The climax came when he cried, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What utter isolation. So as the writer to the Hebrews reminds us, we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tested in every way, just as we are. So let us remember, our friends have not fled from us. Society is not calling for our death. Our leaders are not mocking and abusing us. And God has not forsaken us. So now, back to Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday. Imagine the excitement in Jerusalem. It was almost time for the annual feast of the Passover. This would be a great family time and a time for national thanksgiving and remembrance. A time when they would recall their history of God's deliverance from slavery in Egypt and the eating of the Passover meal. What will our time of national thanksgiving look like when we come out of the other side of this pandemic? No doubt it will be preceded by a time of national mourning because of all who have lost life and loved ones, especially for the first number of years. The early Passover Thanksgiving, Thanksgivings of the Israelites would also have been torn apart with sadness and grief as they recalled the deaths in Egypt 
of the babies being thrown into the Nile and deaths resulting from the abuse by the slave master's oppression and brutality. In Jesus's day, however, far removed from that initial grief, the narrow streets would be full of people. Some lived in Jerusalem, but many would have traveled long distances, not only from within Israel, but much further away from surrounding countries. For the Jews were scattered far and wide as a result of the conquests by the Persians and the Babylonians and by Alexander the Great. His conquest had spread from Greece and on to Jerusalem, resulting in the Greek language becoming the universal language. But now the Romans were in charge and travel became much easier because of the Roman roads. As a result, many Jewish people had moved to establish businesses in Greek-speaking countries, such as Syria, Turkey, and Greece. Many of these Jews would return for Passover and meet up with their friends and families. The historian Josephus estimated that there would be about two to two and a half million people in Jerusalem each year for Passover. In the hot, dusty streets and alleyways, and in the houses, gossip and rumor would abound. Tales would be exchanged of their journeys and the hazards of travel, and what had been happening in the homeland. There would be a nationalistic fervor, and talk of their hatred of the Roman occupation, and the taxes they had to pay, and of the tax gatherers who extorted more than they should. Then there would be talk of a new teacher and healer, a man named Jesus of Nazareth, who had been causing quite a stir around the country. He had been doing amazing miracles, and many were saying that he is the Messiah who had been promised by the prophets. He had also been very critical of the religious leaders, especially of their failure to teach them the truth about God. And had they heard the rumor that this Jesus had actually brought a man who had been dead for four days back to life again? You may know of him. His name is Lazarus, whose sisters are Martha and Mary. They live in Bethany and are well known. As a result of this amazing miracle, the Pharisees became so angry because they thought that Jesus would cause an uprising. They convened a meeting, and from that day on, they plotted to kill him. Nobody had seen him since then, and all the people were asking, what do you think? Isn't he coming to the feast at all? The chief priests and Pharisees have given orders that if anyone knows where Jesus is, they should report it so that they might arrest him. Meantime, Jesus was in the desert, avoiding the chief priests, but he was starting his journey back to Jerusalem. As he entered Jericho, he spotted a small man up a tree, and it was one of those greedy tax collectors. Jesus had tea with a reformed Zacchaeus. And as he left Jericho, two blind men shouted out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus healed them, and they followed him. On his way from Jericho to Jerusalem, Jesus took the 12 disciples aside and told them, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will turn him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. On the third day, he will be raised to life. Jesus was conscious of who he was and also very conscious of what he had come to do. Ahead of him, a cross-shaped shadow could always be seen. 
This explains the determination on his face as he approached Jerusalem for the last time. He was on his death march. Jesus fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 7. Therefore have I set my face like flint. As followers of Jesus, we also need to set our faces like flint in determination to remain faithful to him, whatever the future may hold or what the world may throw up against us, including persecution, disease, or death. This explains the resoluteness of Jesus's words in John chapter 10. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. So call Jesus's death what you wish, an act of grace, a plan of redemption, a martyr's sacrifice. But whatever you do, don't call it an accident. It was anything but that. As they approached the village of Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples ahead to untie the donkey and its colt and to bring them to him. Perhaps while they were waiting for the donkey, some of the group went on to Jerusalem to spread the word that Jesus was on his way. What excitement! Perhaps many went out to meet him. 500 years before, a prophet named Zechariah had said that the king would come not on a war horse like Alexander the Great, but would come to you gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples put their cloaks on the back of the colt and Jesus sat on them. He was telling them that he was a king, but not in a military sense and not to cause an uprising, but as the hymn put it, to ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. What then was the response to this? The crowds spread, spread their cloaks on the road and cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road as well. They were shouting, Hosanna, Lord, save now. Hosanna to the son of David. Yes, the ordinary people hailed him, although they were fickle and turned against him, so that later in the week they were calling, crucify him. The disciples, John tells us, did not understand what all this meant until after Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was given. We each need the Holy Spirit to reveal Christ in us. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were indignant and angry, especially at the children shouting Hosanna in the temple area. Do you know there are still those who murmur and complain about the sound of children in church? The children, however, had no such inhibitions. They continued to shout, Hosanna to the son of David, as they witnessed the healing in the temple of the blind and the lame, who were traditionally barred from the temple area. What sort of people would you be unhappy to see coming through the doors of your church? Jesus approved of the blind, the lame, and the children being in the temple and was especially appreciative of the clarity of their praise. To the Pharisees and teachers, Jesus referred them to their own scriptures in Psalm 8 and verse 2. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. 
And in response to a previous question of the disciples, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus replied, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. May God grant us the humility to accept and trust him with childlike simplicity. All glory, Lord and honor to thee, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet Hosanna's ring. Amen. And now we come to our time of prayer and we're going to focus on the different parts of the Palm Sunday story. As we pray, we remember the joy of the crowds cheering Jesus on his donkey and the heaviness of the suffering which was to follow. We remember, first of all, the joyful noise that the peoples made. Father, the crowds shouted and sang when they welcomed Jesus. We pray that many more will welcome you into their hearts and lives over the Easter season. We pray for more opportunities to spread your good news and the courage to take those opportunities up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think about the donkey. Father, we remember the humble donkey that Jesus rode on. And we pray for that real humility in our hearts this coming Easter. Help us not to value status or image. And help us to value truth and loving service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tony spoke about the children, and we're going to focus on those children now. Father, the children sang and shouted your praise. We pray for all children, but especially those who normally go to the schools in our villages and are now at home. Help us to support them in the love and teaching which they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, the crowds of people were responding to the healing love they'd seen in action in Jesus. We bring to you now, in our love, all those who we would have brought to Jesus for healing and help. In a moment of silence, we just think about all the people who are suffering and who need Jesus' healing and help. Give them comfort and reassurance, wholeness and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, Jesus knew that he was riding to his death. We pray for all people who are on that last journey, especially those who are in pain or who are afraid. We commend to your eternal love all who have died. 
we thank you for the blessings we have received and even for the grief which is part of the love we share. Father, we thank you for all that you have done for us and the amazing extent of your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to say, I, I hope you will join with me in saying the Lord's Prayer, and we're going to say it in the traditional version. No, we're not. We're going to say it in the modern version. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much, Heather, for your prayers and to uh, Jeanette for reading to us and Tony for preaching. And uh, Tony referred to uh, a particular hymn, uh, which we're going to sing now. All glory, Lord, and honour to the Redeemer King. All glory, Lord, and honour to the Redeemer King. To whom the lips of children may sweet hosannas ring. Thou art the King of Israel, thou David's royal son, who in the Lord's name calmest the King and Blessed One. The company of angels are praising thee on high. And mortal men and all things created make reply. The people of the Hebrews with palms before thee went. Our praise and love and anthems before thee we present. To thee before thy passion they sang the hymns of praise. To thee now high exalted a melody we raise. Thou didst accept all praises, accept the love we bring. Who in all good delightest, thou good and gracious King. All glory, Lord, and honour to the Redeemer King. To whom the lips of children make sweet hosannas ring. And so we come now to our final blessing. Christ crucified, draw you to himself, to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. God bless you all, and we hope you have a great day. And join us in a moment for a Zoom coffee session. Goodbye. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thanks, Tony, Jeanette, Heather, Alison, everybody who's made that happen.
Um, so that Zoom coffee session, uh, if you're a member of the Woodbridge Group of Churches, you will have received details. They're on our Facebook group. Um, uh, if, sorry, if, if you're watching from further afield, sorry, um, that's not open to you. Uh, but uh, for regular members of our churches, uh, join us for coffee and chat uh, in a moment. Next Sunday is Easter Day. Uh, and we'll be having a communion service and we'll be joined by a special guest, uh, the Archdeacon. So uh, look forward to seeing you uh, either for coffee and chat or uh, next Sunday on Easter Day. Take care and stay safe. Bye bye. Bye.